Welcome back to the channel. I want to talk a little bit more about some of the excuses that have come forward about the Cochrane meta-analysis of randomized control trials of community masking. Of course, it was for all physical interventions. Of course, community masking did not fare so well. It basically didn't do anything for influenza-like illness, for COVID-19-like illness, and for influenza and for COVID-19. It was a total failure. So the randomized control trial evidence fails to show a benefit of community masking on these important endpoints. Now, of course, more studies can always be done. No randomized trial can show that an intervention doesn't work under any circumstances. That would be crazy. So more studies could be done. And in fact, I was the one who always said we need more studies, especially in younger people, children, before we go zealous and try to recommend masking for people as young as two. Well, John Mandrola has written about this topic for Sensible Medicine. It's a very thoughtful article. And in response to his article, people pushed back and said, look, if you look at the confidence interval around masking, you find that it fails to exclude a meaningful benefit. In other words, masking could work. We just didn't run the studies big enough, you know? We didn't run them long enough. Maybe if we ran the right study, we'd prove it works. You didn't exclude a meaningful benefit. And as such, the right conclusion isn't that it doesn't work. It's that we don't know. We don't know. So I really want to take this idea and put it in the broader context of, of medical practices. But first I should tell you, what is a 95% confidence interval? It's basically the idea that if you were to run an analysis over again, hundreds of times, 95% of the times, the true point estimate would fall within the confidence interval. In any given instance, of course, the true point estimate is either in the 95% confidence interval or it ain't. So that's one of the fallacies where people says it applies to an individual study. No, it applies to if one were to run this hundreds and hundreds of times, then 95% of the times the true point estimate falls in that. But it's really sort of a probability density function of where the true point estimate might lie. It's most likely to occur in this broad range. That's really what it is. And what they're saying is basically, until that confidence interval excludes all of the meaningful benefits, we can't say it doesn't work. We've got to say we don't know. And that's the argument. And that argument, I think, is bogus. I think they don't actually hold that standard. And I'm going to illustrate it to you here. I'll show you the figure. The figure I'm showing you on the screen is, of course, a picture of the confidence intervals around the biggest six masking randomized control trials. And as you can see, the confidence intervals are wide. Everything below one is a favorable benefit. Everything above one is detriment. And what it says is that even though these six trials individually are negative, in other words, they cross one, they collectively include some values, hazard ratios that are quite low and quite favorable. And in fact, if you pull them, as I did in Stata 13.0, the 95% confidence interval goes from 0.75 to 1.02, which means the bulk of it is in the favorable direction. And if anything, it looks like, you know, had you just run it a little bit more, you might get a benefit. Of course, when I wrote this essay on Substack, I was playing a trick on the audience because these ain't masking trials. Oh, no, 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 no. That's something else. But you see the argument. These studies do not exclude a meaningful benefit, but these are not studies of masking. What they are is studies of stem cell transplant for breast cancer. So in the 1980s and early 1990s, we developed heavy doses of chemotherapy and salvaged stem cell infusion for women with metastatic and even adjuvant breast cancer. And this was a very toxic procedure. And it ultimately was debunked when six randomized trials were negative. And that is in fact the actual pooled hazard ratio from the pooled estimate by Don Berry and colleagues in the JCO. And I'm gonna show you on the screen again, the actual figure from the JCO paper. These are the six studies. And that's the actual pooled confidence interval, 0.75 to 1.02. And yet people take that and say, this is a debunked medical practice. This is something we're never gonna do again. Now on the screen, I'm going to show you the actual Cochrane mask confidence interval, 0.72 to 1.42 and barbaric transplant at the same time. And what's my point here? If anything, <laughs> barbaric transplant looks better. More of the point estimate is in the right direction. Masking looks worse and even compatible with an increase in COVID-19 spread, okay? Now, some people might say that, well, the bar for transplant has to be higher because it's much more toxic than mask, which is at worst an inconvenience. Let's put an asterisk there because for some groups of people, hard of hearing people, young children, it might be more than an inconvenience, but yeah, okay. But remember, this conference interval for masking is for getting SARS-CoV-2. For transplant, it's for being alive, okay? It's a more important endpoint for transplant. So, you know, you might say the bar should be higher, but you might say the bar should be lower because these are women who are often dying in rapid fashion. And if 
this looks like the conference interval. Maybe we should do it, you know? But if that doesn't satisfy you, if you want a different example, I actually show in my Substack post another example. This is another lesson in medical history. And, you know, if you really want the lessons in medical history, you got to read two books. One, Ending Medical Reversal, and then Malignant, the two books I've written. But this was... People who have dust mite allergy and asthma, they're asked to put their clothing, their bedding, their bedding in impermeable bed covers, those sort of terrible rubber sheets that we might remember our friends may have had in the 1980s. And lo and behold, if you do that, you're going to less likely to get the dust mite allergen on the outside of the sheet, but it's also going to be a bit uncomfortable. Here they randomize people to those impermeable bed covers or sham bed covers, bed covers that felt like rubber, but they had holes poked in them. And they actually show no statistically significant reduction in exacerbation. But look at the hazard ratio. I'll put it up on the screen. It goes from 0.60 to 1.21. In other words, there could have been up to a 40% reduction in exacerbations, basically, more or less. You could look at the same negative study and you could say, this study failed to exclude a 40% reduction which is clinically meaningful. So it doesn't say that it don't work. It just means more studies are needed. And yet in both the cases of autologous stem cell transplant and the case of this impermeable bed cover, ain't nobody said that. That's not the way we talked about it. These were treated as a negative randomized control trials and negative pooled analytic estimates, okay? Only now, for the one thing you're really into, you suddenly demand evidence so negative that the 95% confidence interval excludes any possibility of benefit. That bar is too high. It's too stringent. You've never held it in all of medical history. You're making it up. If you go through the history of the debunked medical practices, you ain't going to find that people adhered to that standard throughout medical history. And that is the point. This is a very unusual and unique situation where people for the very first time are saying, just because the randomized evidence is negative doesn't mean it doesn't work. That absence of evidence is evidence of absence. That's true. That's sort of philosophically always true. But practically, that's not the threshold you've ever used. And if anything, autotransplant for breast cancer might be making a comeback the way you're talking. And I hope that's not the case because it was a very barbaric procedure. But the conference interval there, if anything, was more favorable. So I think this is a disingenuous argument. I think the proponents of masking had a burden. The burden was on their shoulders. You either show it works or you shut up and take it away. Three years is far too long to continue a practice with no evidence. Not only should it not be mandated, but you do not have evidence to advise the community to do it. You don't even have the evidence to advise them. The WHO, they didn't run enough randomized, they ran zero randomized trials. NIAID ran zero trials. CDC ran zero trials. That's a failure. You failed. Pack up your bags. You're done. We're going to send you to where autologous transplant for breast cancer is, which is medical oblivion. And that's really where you belong. And so this is an inconsistent standard that people are just marshalling. It's not a fair argument. They've never really held this standard before. Those are my thoughts on this issue. You like this video, you know what to do. Like, subscribe, comment, leave a message below. Until next time.